Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. Glad to be here with you. You know, as we end our look at the book of Proverbs, we get to an extended section on one topic. And usually through Proverbs, we see a verse or two here or there on one topic, but extended sections on one topic are kind of rare throughout the, the book. But here in chapter 31, we get nearly the whole chapter on one topic, and that is the characteristics of a good wife. I want to encourage you to go and read this today. I'm not going to read the whole chapter for you, but some excerpts, but I encourage you to go and read this and dive into it because it presents this wonderful countercultural view of what an ideal woman and an ideal wife is. Because the world around us is constantly selling us on what ideal looks like, especially in terms of females. And it's built around beauty and avoiding aging and looking young when you're old. It's built around women making a name for themselves. It's built around, lately, women doing all the same things as men instead of celebrating how women are uniquely different. But here in Proverbs 31, it says this. It says, towards the end of the chapter, it says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is in vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Now, this is a very different tone to what a noble or good woman looks like compared to our culture today. And this chapter has been the launching point of countless women's ministries and conferences and blogs. And for good reason, this chapter is a wonderful explanation of, of, of great female character and the ways that God has designed women to be. But the original audience of this wasn't actually ladies at a women's conference, but it was men. It was, it was written to the sons here to, to understand what women should be like and, and what characteristics they should praise. And this actually became a text that Jewish men would learn and memorize and use to praise and encourage their wives. And in fact, some traditions suggest that they had a Sabbath tradition of reciting Proverbs 31 over the women in their house to encourage them and thank them for all that they did. So in light of that, here are some encouragements for, for those of you watching today. First men that are watching. Let me encourage you to go and read and process through Proverbs 31. If you aren't married, use this as a guide to evaluate a future partner rather than what our culture communicates. Look to God's word and the things that it praises and encourages about women. If you are married, let me encourage you to go find some ways to praise and encourage your wife for what she does or ways that she's living out how God has designed her to be. And ladies, if you're watching, let me remind you of this. This is not a chapter of 21 verses of a checklist of things for you to carry out. This is 21 verses of celebrating who you are and how God has designed you. And it may be tempting to read some of those things and feel shame because you aren't that or you don't have strengths in those areas, but instead read these verses in encouragement that God created you to walk with Him and find value and worth in your relationship with Christ. You know, as we end 2021 here in a few days, my hope is that we would all learn that charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but those who fear the Lord will be praised because that's really what matters at the end of the day. Hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.